Okay, we have a situation here. <laughs> I was going to say it like that. Um, we're going to read... Uh, oh, drink some water first. It's hot, but what can I say? Hmm. And uh, I'm traveling. And on Sundays, I do what's called Sunday Sermon out of Mr. Neely Fuller Jr.'s book. Well, let me get it now. Hold on a second. Hold on. Um, uh, the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. It's a uh, contemporary, a compens compensatory counter racist code by Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. This is the uh, uh, 2016 revised edition. Right? Uh, so you rise and well, you revise and expand edition. It's a textbook, workbook. For thought, speech, and or action for victims, got to be a victim, of uh, racism and white supremacy. There's specifically four of those victims, but anybody can read it, you know what I mean? Including the suspected white supremacist. Including the white supremacist, too. And whatever. Anybody can read the book. Which is, I think it's a, they say it's available on Amazon. And they advise, if you do buy it from Amazon, then please leave a comment. It helps the peoples out. Um... So anyway, so every Sunday I have been reading from, from this book because this is my scripture. Um, uh, so I'm going to read. Oh, this, is, yeah. this, is the, this is the this is the one I left. I left this and the uh, this is my brother's house in, in New York. As you can see, he like he like a big time. Well, he's retired from being a big time professor over there. You know, I don't know, so, well, whatever. Um, <clears throat> oh, this is the long dream. Ooh, I'll leave this here. This is a play we did a long time ago. We did, I mean, uh, well, Creative Unity. Uh, see, Long Dream. It was like what I call a graduation project. Because uh, there's about three, three, four boys uh, growing up in, you know, whatever it was, it was, a, it was a heavy novel. In fact, please, if you teach, you know, especially you teach the black boys, you know, I don't know what y'all be doing, but you know, especially um, junior high, high school, Age, they should be reading the long dream, not to, what's the other one, the, the one with bigger Thomas, not in uh, what's that one, the, the one with bigger Thomas, you know what I mean, whatever that one where he kills the white girl and the furnace things and all that sort of stuff. But instead of reading that book, you know, by by Richard Wright, which was his second book written, uh, but the first book that was published, it was a big hit with uh, uh you know, with the with everybody, I guess. When it, was, it was the first black person to be on the National Book Club or something like that. Anyway, we did this. Wow, hey. On WBF September, oh, September 9th back then. Uh, Richard Wright's Richard Wright's final novel, final novel. This wasn't his final. Oh, maybe it was, I don't know. I don't think so, because he did. Uh, oh, I know what this was. Okay, um, um, my favorite book is The Outsider. You know, I, I was talking to Zulu. It was well, my outside. It was a reworking of that Bigger Thomas book that he that he did. In other words, the Bigger Thomas book was like a, a was a, was a a two-dimensional character. He purposely wrote it like that. And then when he got this response, he going like, what the hey? So in like in 53 or something like that, he did The Outsider, right? And that, and that was like a three-dimensional. The guy's name is Cross Damon. He was the three-dimensional <laughs> bigger topics, you know? And when um, I was Henry Winslow Jr., uh, uh, I, I was I, I spent some time with him, with, that, with the guy. Anyway, he wrote at the time, he's a critic, he wrote at the time, uh, uh, Damon, uh, David Cross is a bigger, bigger Thomas. Pretty weak, huh? Oh, anyway, yeah. And this is the cast that we did, right? Uh, I'll look at this some other time. Well, I'm going to leave this here. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, Bruce Mack was there, musician. Bruce Mack was a musician. You know, PBR Street Gang? Yeah, he played uh, he a musical director. He played keyboards. This, uh, who's Michael Green, guitar, uh, Miles. What's that, uh? Is that my son? What am I doing? I got glasses here. <laughs> my reading glasses. Let's see. Uh, uh, Miles, I think this is uh, Madison, drums and percussion. And oh, Daryl Mitchell. Oh, Crave Unity. Daryl was on bass, you know? That was the musicians for this piece. Daryl was also in the piece. He played one of the one of the things, one of the one of the young boys. Oh, well, you know, like that. So, well, Crave Unity, like Michael Mayburn. Oh, Pamela, okay, um, Yusuf Lamont, John McNeil, 
and uh, Rodney Black were the four boys. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, anyway, this, uh, oh boy, brings back memories. <clears throat> okay, so let me leave this. Oh, I, I lost the page with that. Well, I'll get to this in a second. I was unpacking it. Well, so let me get to it now. You say, well, brother, if this is your scripture, why are you dressed the way you are? That's what I'm saying. It's scripture. Different kind of scripture. <laughs> and what I'm supposed to do is read. So I, I usually um, look at it. In fact, look, today's is today Wednesday. Oh, so I can download uh, uh, his Miss Neely Fuller Jr. talks via the, or transmits via the internet every Tuesday, uh, from 9 to 11 in the morning, something like that, 10 to 12. And, uh, and it usually goes up to, I can pull it down before I, you know, before I go to Africa. Anyway, so what it is, I, I, I think it's, it's plain place. I'm appropriately dressed, of course. Any, anybody can read it. And, well, anyway, so let me just go. I don't want to do this area. There's nine areas of, uh, of activity, nine areas of human activity. And uh, we're going to go to area, we're going to go to economics, which is area one. Huh? Uh, and just to let you know, and the nine areas are, here we go, nine areas are economics, which we're going to deal with now, education, entertainment, labor, law, uh, politics, that's people relations, uh, religion, sex, and war, counter war. So we're going to be dealing with uh, page, uh, whatever page, page 99, why not, no, wait, up here. Usually I do a whole section, gee, and uh, hmm, it might take too long, well, maybe not. Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's let's stay in ninety six because I don't want to. I don't have to. I don't want to do that right now. Uh, okay, yeah. Let's do page ninety six, and and we're gonna just do this thing. Um, oh, the summary of economics is very long. I don't want to do that right now. So let me do this one. Uh, it's a question. What is the difference between music and noise? Interesting enough, uh, last night, I, uh, two of the DJs, I used to be uh, arts director for WBA Radio, which also made me the music director, and two of the DJs, uh, well, um, Jeannie Hopper, who I was also midwife for the program, Liquid Sound Lounge, is a whole thing, y'all. Pay attention to some of them. Anyway, um, and... Uh, and Delphine Blue, one of the finest DJs on the planet, she's currently working at the WFUV. She gets paid for being a DJ. The DJs under me weren't being paid. It was listener sponsored, which made it a challenge to be a, an administrator to, you know, people that are not paid. Oh, try that. And very diverse people. <laughs> hey, well, anyway, so let me uh, read this. The difference between music and noise. Uh, well, question: What is the difference between music and noise? Answer: Music is a combination of the presence of sound and the absence of sound. No, so is noise. Sound helps, to, sound helps to produce and maintain justice and correctness. That's interesting. Never heard that before. Where's my, oh, well, I can't read this. It's not my book. No. Uh, this is incorrect. Or it helps to produce and maintain injustice and incorrectness. Sound can be either music or noise. So far, the sounds that have been made by the people of the known universe have not resulted in the end of white supremacy, which she defines as racism. Nor have these sounds resulted in the end of injustice and incorrectness. Therefore, he uses I'll get it. You know, let me let me use the logic. Uh, you know, this this called a Socratic, you know, way of doing this. Basically, 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 it's what he's saying: questions and answers. It's based on logic: question and answers, question and answers. It's it's nothing but Socrates. Well, I shouldn't say that. In the, in the translation, in the uh, European or in that whatever Anglo uh, thing, then they idolize Socrates and, and uh, what's that Aristotle. You know, we under Aristotelian way of of education. Those kind of people, of course, all those people got this stuff from Africa. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't leave that alone. Therefore, no people have so far produced any sounds or any place in the known universe that have qualified for the title music. Oh, well, we got a lot of musicians out there just begging to differ. Right? Um, 
all of the sounds made by the people have so far only qualified at, uh, for the title of noise. Music by people is yet to be produced. It is correct for all people to try to produce music. It is also correct to keep listening to the sounds that help them to think constructively. There you go, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm not going to preach on, well, I said what I said and I did what I did. So that's it. I being, well, me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.